Good morning, grandchildren. I am going to start a new playlist, and I'm going to do it besides the series that I do for Skyrim. But you're always wanting me to read to you. So, this is Grandma Cheryl's. And from time to time, I shall read you a book that I get in Skyrim. And we'll sit over there in our chair and I'll just read it to you. And that's the only thing that this playlist is going to be about. It's just Grandma reading Skyrim books. So let's walk in here and see what we got on the bookshelf. History of Riften of Cross Daggers by Dwin and Wendell. And I'm not going to know how to pronounce some of these games. So if you want to correct me in the comments, that would be perfectly okay. Okay. sitting when I look at you. Well, that's not very good, is it? I can't back the camera up. Oh, well. Phooey! All right, we shall just sit there and read to you because I have to open the book and Anyway, that will be in front of our faces. I'll figure this out. All right. The History of Riften. Situated on the eastern banks of Lake Honwich, Henrik. The city of Riften served as a reminder of a bygone era. The one proud streets and buildings have vanished and been replaced with a collection of wooden structures and rough stonework shrouded in a permanent fog-like mist. In order to understand how such a large city became nothing more than a glorified fortress, one need only look to the history books for answers. Riften was a major hub of activity for trade caravans and travelers to and from Morrowind. Fishing skiffs could be seen dotting the lake at all hours of the day and the bustling city was alive with activity at night. The city guard was formidable and maintained a tight grasp on its populace, keeping them safe from harm. The marketplace in Riften was also quite a draw, containing numerous stands offering wares from across Tamriel. In the fourth era, 98, amidst the confusion of the Void Knights, Hosken, 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 cross daggers, cool name, huh? Hoskin Cross Daggers was installed as Jarl, as Jarl when the previous Jarl had been assassinated. Although many believed that Hoskin was responsible and cries of protest filled the streets of Riften, the Jarl took the throne and immediately took action to protect his station. Using the city guard, he had the streets cleared of protesters and initiated a curfew. Any caught breaking the curfew was immediately jailed without process or executed if it was a repeat offense. That's harsh. For over 40 years, Hoskin ruled Riften 
with a black heart and an iron fist. He imposed ridiculous taxes upon his subjects and any merchant that wished to sell their wares within the city walls were taxed harshly. Hoskin kept most of the coin for himself, using it to construct a massive wooden castle with unnecessarily lavish quartering within. The castle took seven years to build and became a visual reminder of the people's oppression, which earned it the nickname Hoskin's Folly. Towards the end of his reign, the streets of Erifton became littered with refuse and its people plagued by disease and hunger. Then in the fourth era, 129, the people had finally had enough. With their numbers, they were able to temporarily overwhelm the city guard long enough to set Hoskins' folly on fire with the greedy Jarl still within it. As the fighting commenced, the fire spread through the city unchecked. By the morning, the people had emerged victorious, but not without great cost. Most of the city was now in ruins and main, many had died. It took five years to rebuild Rifton into the smaller city that it is today. And even though over 50 years have passed since then, it still has yet to fully recover. Some believe it will never achieve the level of affluence it saw at the beginning of the fourth era, but there are a few who still hold on to the hope that Rifton can return from the ashes and become a center of commerce once again. So that's the story of Rifton. And I live here in Rifton, in this house. And uh, so if you'll come by and visit me again, I will have gathered some more books and choose another one to read to you. So if you like to hear me read books, stop on by my house. I'm Grandma Cheryl's, and I'll be here. Bye-bye, grandkids.